welcome to the Genshin Impact 5 star character overviews. In this video, we'll be covering the characters hailing from Mondstadt. For each character, we'll be giving a brief overview on their abilities, strength, weaknesses, archetype, recommended stat upgrades, as well as how to generally play them. This will also be condensed into a closing panel at the end of each character section to show you recommended weapons and artifact sets, giving you a general idea of what you should pull for. We understand that some players may not recognize certain items in the closing panels, in which case, please refer to the link in the description below for a full written version of the script containing all the information from this video. In any case, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. After being separated from their sibling by the unknown god and stranded in Tavat, Aether slash Lumine embark on their long quest to reunite with their long lost twin. Being the main character, the Traveler is the only 5 star character that every player is guaranteed to obtain when they start the game. Traveler's elemental skill, Palm Vortex, forms a vacuum that causes animo damage and explodes at the end of the skill duration, pushing enemies away. When held, it does more damage and has wider AoE. Their elemental burst is the Gust Surge, which summons a tornado that can pick up small enemies and objects like Xiangling's Guoba while dealing constant animo damage to them. Both their skill and burst have elemental absorption, which allows it to pick up and spread other elemental auras, specifically Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro, and will deal additional elemental damage of that type. Thanks to Traveler's skill and burst constantly knocking opponents off their feet, this makes dealing with swarms of enemies easier due to crowd control. Alongside that, the Traveler can also be healed if their skill kills any enemies, and their normal attacks also do animo damage if the combo is fully performed. At C6, Gust Search also becomes much better, since it decreases enemies' elemental resistance by 20%, which is especially nice when you swirl it with another element and if you rely on elemental reactions for damage. On the flip side, Traveler's skill requires holding to take the most advantage out of, which generally leaves you open to getting hit and interrupted. So ideally, you'd want a shield to use it. Also, while it can heal you after use, it only applies if it kills the enemy as well, making the skill a little bit unreliable as a healing mechanic. Their burst also has fairly inconsistent auto-targeting, and the fact that it only goes off in one direction means it's quite weak against large or boss-type enemies since it cannot pick them up nor deal enough ticks for significant amounts of damage. Traveler isn't exactly a character that particularly excels at many things, being the nature of a free character. Their low base stats and multipliers make them not well suited as a main DPS, and their burst is a little wacky in terms of the utility. However, Traveler's crowd control and elemental absorption make them slightly more suited to a decent general support type unit. Being so general also means that you can be a bit more lenient with your artifacts, as choosing to focus on attack stats, energy recharge, elemental mastery, or bonus animal damage will all work just fine. If you are still early to mid game and need to use the Traveler as a placeholder, want to use them as a support in certain teams, or simply want to channel your inner MC, then ride the winds with Aether and Lumine. You carry the aura of the stars. Interesting. The chief alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. Albedo is a soft-spoken, reclusive person, spending most of his time in Dragon Spine in the pursuit of someday using alchemy to create life. Albedo is a unique Geo character who primarily focuses on dealing big AoE damage while supporting his party in many different ways. His elemental skill is called the Solar Isotoma, where Albedo creates a construct that periodically does AoE Geo damage known as the Transient Blossoms, whenever you deal damage to enemies within the Solar Isotoma field. This damage scales off Albedo's defense stat. If a character stands atop the flower, it will raise said character up to a certain height which can be helpful in combat to do both plunging attacks or avoiding your enemies. This skill lasts 30 seconds and it has only a 4 second cooldown, which means you should ideally have this on the field at all times. Similarly to Geo Traveler, you can choose where to place it down when holding the skill. His elemental burst is the Tectonic Tide. Albedo unleashes large amounts of Geo Crystals, dealing AoE Geo damage towards the enemies in its range. If the Solar Isotoma is on the field when Tectonic Tide is activated, 
seven fatal blossoms will generate within the solar isotomous field. It will then explode, dealing more AoE Geo damage. Thanks to Albedo's elemental skill, he can provide really strong off-field Geo damage. Its short cooldown and long duration means that you can constantly produce shields with Crystallize, keeping your party members protected. This can also act as a battery for certain Geo characters like Zhongli or Ningguang, since you will constantly be regaining energy with the damage produced by his skill. Because Solar Isotoma's periodic AoE Geo damage skills off defense, this makes Albedo great if you have many leftover defense stats artifacts that you can't really use with anyone else. Albedo is also really flexible in team comps that rely on elemental reactions and his burst provides 125 elemental mastery to all party members for 10 seconds, massively increasing your team's damage output should they rely on reactions like Vaporize or Melt. And thanks to his low energy requirement of only 40, you will likely be able to cast this fairly often. While Albedo's elemental skills scales off defense, his burst scales off his attack stat. This means that it can be quite challenging finding a balance on what stats to upgrade for both abilities, which ultimately comes down to what you consider your priority. This can be fixed with Constellation 2, but this is naturally very difficult to obtain. In addition, Solar Isotoma is quite fragile, meaning it can be broken quite easily by bigger enemies, and even would not activate in certain situations, like directly on Signora or on Oceanet platforms. So you have to plan carefully when and where you wish to place it. Solar Isotoma's transient blossom damage also will not proc against enemies with physical shields, like in the case of the Abyss Mages. Overall, Albedo excels at constantly dealing damage to enemies while remaining largely off-field. Both his skill and burst are strong in enhancing damage of your other party members, while constantly also being able to create shields and deal geo damage itself. Albedo is one of the few characters who is heavily reliant on defense as one of his primary stats to look out for in artifacts and weapons. While building his artifacts, a Geo Damage Bonus Goblet will also be very helpful in boosting his overall damage output. If you're looking for a strong off field who can constantly do damage on field while boosting your other party member's damage, and more specifically for elemental reactions, then it's time to scale Dragon Spine and practice alchemy with Albedo. If you have things you want to get done, let me know. After falling out with the Knights of Favonius, the owner of the Dawn Winery, Diluc Ragunvinda, becomes a shadow protector over the people of Mondstadt, swearing to vanquish anyone who threatens his city at all costs. Diluc is a simple and straightforward character, who mainly focuses on whacking the opponent to a pulp and dealing big damage as a primary DPS. Diluc's elemental skill is the Searing Onslaught. When triggered, Diluc does a forward slash and deals pyro damage. This can also interrupt opponents, making it useful to stagger them before they perform a certain attack. This has a 3-hit combo, which can be performed consecutively before it enters its cooldown. Diluc's elemental burst, Dawn, makes him perform a slash that covers both a wide AoE and summons a phoenix that also deals pyro damage against anything in its path. This also imbues his Claymore with Pyro, allowing his normal and charged attacks afterwards to deal Pyro damage, which can be useful for elemental reactions. Diluc is extremely simple to play, and his gameplay simply revolves around cycling between his normal attacks and his elemental skill and burst whenever they are available. As both a Claymore and Pyro user, he also has a much easier time against enemies with shields. Diluc's elemental burst is quite strong, not only dealing big AoE damage, but also having a fairly low energy cost. Thanks to his elemental skill being able to be cast multiple times, as well as his burst imbuing his normal attacks with Pyro, this means that he has very low downtime on his Pyro application, and he also doesn't lose this Pyro infusion after swapping to other party members. This makes Diluc one of the best characters in the game for constant big Pyro DPS. While Diluc's burst can do a lot of damage, it does have a fairly long casting animation, meaning your DPS can potentially be slightly hindered. It also does have the unfortunate tendency of missing occasionally, as Diluc's direction of his Claymore swing can sometimes be unpredictable due to the weird casting animation. It also knocks opponents backwards, which is an interesting choice considering Diluc is a character focused on melee attacks. His normal attacks are also a bit sluggish, though this is fairly commonplace when it comes to Claymore characters. Diluc is simple, easy to play, and doesn't need a lot of thinking. He's fairly flexible when it comes to slotting into teams, and his whole gameplay is revolved around cycling between his normal attacks and skill and burst. 
He can be extremely strong with a good Hydra support unit like Sing Chu, who can buff his damage using Vaporize, making Elemental Mastery as well as attack stats both good options to look out for when upgrading with artifacts and weapons. If you need a simple but effective Pyro DPS, whose main focus is just to constantly whack enemies with a big sword, then take a trip down to Dawn Winery and look no further than the look. It takes two to tango. After being denounced as a traitor by her family clan, Eula, known as the Spindrift Knight, now serves as the captain of the reconnaissance company amongst the Knights of Favonius. Eula is a Claymore user who scales off physical damage. Her normal attack allows her to perform up to 5 consecutive strikes and she does it with absolute elegance. The animation team really outdid themselves here. Her elemental skill, Ice Tight Vortex, causes Eula to perform a slash which deals cryo damage and builds stacks of Grimheart. When held, Eula will perform a lunging slash forward, dealing cryo damage and consuming all her stacks of Grimheart. Each Grimheart stack consumed will be converted into a Falling Sword which deals further Cryo AoE damage as well as decreasing enemies' physical and Cryo resistance. Eula's Elemental Burst, Glacial Illumination, makes her swing her Claymore around dealing Cryo damage to anyone around her, after which creating a Lightfall Sword which follows her around for 7 seconds. During these 7 seconds, any attack that originates from Eula will charge the Lightfall Sword. After the duration, the Lightfall Sword will burst dealing physical AoE damage. In the event that Eula is swapped out early for a different character, her Lightfall Sword will burst early. Being the strongest physical damage dealer in the game, Eula does not need to rely on her elemental skill to deal constant damage as her normal attacks are already very strong. If she does however use her elemental skill, Grimheart makes Eula gain resistance to interruption, which is nice to have as performing combos on enemies will be much easier. Eula also has one of the strongest bursts in game, holding the record for the highest amount of damage done in Spiral Abyss. Her burst also has a pretty big AoE when unleashed which makes it pretty hard to miss. Although Eula is considered a Cryo character, her ability to apply Cryo is abysmal, only being able to apply Cryo once with her elemental skill and once with her elemental burst. Eula's burst cost is also really high and her energy generation is not great, so it would be preferable if she had an energy battery such as Diona, Rosaria or Raiden Shogun. Eula also has a really slow attack speed, something which is fixed with her signature weapon, the Song of Broken Pines. Though obviously, this weapon is really hard to obtain for free-to-play players. Overall, Eula is a great physical DPS, both free-to-play or wailed for. Similar to Diluc, she has very simple gameplay with very little skill to master, because her gameplay is literally just clicking, and as a bonus, has pretty cool looking animations. Her lack of reliance on elemental reaction also means you only really need to focus on leveling her attack and physical damage bonus stats which should make farming for artifacts easier. If you're looking for a consistent physical damage dealer, then start tapping your shoes and have a dance with Eula. I am Jean, the Dandelion Knight. After Grandmaster Varka left on an expedition, his role was passed down to the eldest daughter of the Gunhilder clan. Now the acting Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, Jean Gunhilda, protects Mondstadt as the Dandelion Knight. Jean's unique charged attack consumes a set amount of stamina and is able to launch enemies. Launched enemies will fall down slowly. Jean's elemental skill, Gale Blade, creates wind around her blade that launches enemies in the direction that Jean is aiming at. When held, it constantly consumes Jean's stamina while pulling nearby enemies in front of her. This also allows her to change the direction she desires to launch enemies towards. You can use this in tandem with her charge attack to pull them down first after displacing them to deal fall damage, then launch them back up into the air again. Jean's elemental burst, Dandelion Breeze, creates a field around her, knocking surrounding opponents while dealing animal damage. The field also constantly heals all party members and continuously heals the characters within the field, infusing the characters with animo. The field also deals animal damage to enemies entering and exiting it. Jean can provide insane damage and insane heals thanks to her strong elemental skill and burst respectively. Her elemental skill in particular has a short cooldown and provides a good amount of animal particles, which can be used to fuel Jean's strong burst or towards other energy hungry characters like Xiao. Jean's unique charge attacks also allow her to pull floating enemies down with her skill to deal fall damage which scales off the enemy's max HP. 
This makes Jean the only character that can abuse fall damage on enemies consistently. Dandelion Breeze also cleanses party members within the field, removing any other element imbued onto them. While Gale Blade is incredibly strong, Jean must be within 20 levels of the opponent to be able to actually displace them. This means that you will actually have to put in some investment into Jean relative to your world level to keep up with your opponent's levels, especially in the case of Spiral Abyss. At the same time, Gale Blade also has its limitations. It cannot be used to displace some larger enemies like Ruin Guards or weekly bosses, making this game plan far less effective in those situations. Overall, Jean is a great all-rounder character, who his fantastic healing abilities make her able to fit in nearly any team. Her elemental burst, allowing an entire party to take advantage of it, means she's also an excellent character when playing co-op. Jean can also pull double duty as a sub-DPS thanks to her big damage, and her elemental skill when combined with her charge attacks make her good for crowd control too. Jean has very strong healing abilities, as such, you can look out for crit rate and crit damage stats in weapons and artifacts to buff Jean up as a strong DPS dealer as well. Since Jean's healing abilities scale with her attack stats, this makes attack percent and energy recharge good stats to look out for too. If you are in need of a healer in your team, or just want a fantastic general all-rounder, then let Jean be your knight in shining armor. So good at remembering. The daughter of the intrepid and often quite destructive adventurer, Alice, Klee takes after her mother in many ways, much to the dismay of the Knights of Avonius who she has been entrusted to. Klee is a rather cute but explosive 5 star character with a very unique skill set that could probably blast your enemies away at a moment's notice. Klee's elemental passive, Pounding Surprise, occurs when Jumpy Dumpty and her normal attack deals damage. Klee has a 50% chance to obtain an explosive spark, and this spark is consumed by the next charge attack which costs no stamina and deals 50% more damage. Klee's elemental skill, Jumpy Dumpty, god I love that name, is a bomb that bounces 3 times when thrown. It ignites and deals AoE pyro damage with every bounce. On the third bounce, the bomb will split into many mines. These mines will explode on contact with enemies or explode after a short period of time, dealing more pyro damage. These mines can also be manipulated with animal skills such as Sucrosis or Jean's elemental skill. Klee's elemental burst, Sparks and Splash, automatically deals AoE pyro damage to nearby targets and hits 6 times every 2 seconds for a total of 10 seconds. Do note that swapping to another character during this period will end the burst prematurely. Thanks to Cleave being a Catalyst user, she can immediately inflict Pyro damage onto enemies, the damage of which could be further boosted if you have a strong support type unit to maximize your elemental reactions. Cleave's charge attacks can often stagger enemies easily, which gives you time to think for your next course of action. This stagger status can also be useful to interrupt enemies about to attack you, since Cleave does have problems dodging due to her small stature. Cleave does have quite a high skill ceiling to maximize her damage. Proper use of the correct animation cancelling at any given situation and stamina management will definitely push her to her boundaries. Being the shortest character alongside Sayu and Diona, dodging will be quite hard for Klee. She's also extremely squishy, therefore relies on shield party members or iframe dodging. Klee's basic attacks can feel extremely clunky and work very differently compared to other Catalyst characters. Characters with hit scan like Mona and Sucrose, and characters with homing projectiles like Ning Wang and Yan Fei feels much smoother and easier to play without requiring much animation cancelling. Klee does not have a very consistent burst damage since it only activates periodically, and it doesn't help that it also requires her to stay on the field. Swapping to another character will cancel her burst entirely and end it early. Klee is an amazing pyro DPS who provides a very unorthodox way of playing a Catalyst character in comparison to her other counterparts. She has a nice multiplier from her buff's charge attack provided by her passive which a player could abuse by grouping up mobs and using her elemental reactions. Just like the loop, pairing her up with a great hydro support like Sing Chiu can make her charge attacks do stupid amounts of damage with Vaporize. But do be wary of her passive, because if you're not paying attention, you might just run out of stamina much quicker than you think. Being a pyro DPS, pyro damage bonus, crit, as well as attack percent stats are all very good things to look out for in her artifacts and weapons. If you're looking for a pyro DPS with an unfamiliar playstyle that has a high skill ceiling to master, then it's time to pack up some bombs and go fish blasting with Pete. If it is divination you seek from me, then I ask you respect my name. 
a talented and aspiring astrologist, the young and mysterious Mona, comes into Mondstadt looking for Klee after her teacher entrusts her with an important task. Mona is one of the few characters with a unique sprint in the game. While sprinting, she not only moves faster than other characters, but due to the nature of her element, it also allows her to freely sprint on water. When you stop sprinting and Mona appears from the water, you will imbue any nearby enemies with Hydro, making this a quick way to get a hit start on your elemental reactions. Do note though that if you run out of stamina while sprinting over water, you will drown. Mona can also easily apply wet status to opponents with her normal attacks, as is the nature of a Catalyst user. Her elemental skill is the Mirror Reflection of Doom. This summons a decoy that will distract enemies while periodically dealing Hydro damage to them. If the skill is held, Mona will take a backstep as well. Once the decoy expires, it explodes, causing AoE Hydro damage. Mona's elemental burst is the Stellaris Phantasm, where she casts a large bubble that renders smaller enemies immobile and also applies a debuff known as Omen. Once an opponent within the bubble takes damage, it will burst, dealing massive hydro damage and start the omen countdown, during which opponents will take significantly more damage from your attacks for a short duration. Being a Catalyst user, Mona is able to start elemental reactions very easily with her party members, since her normal attacks immediately apply hydro. Her elemental skill and burst, particularly the latter, are both incredibly strong to synergize with her other teammates in both freeze or vaporize teams. Her burst's omen status also allows her other party members to deal massive damage to enemies, and if built with enough energy recharge, she will be able to constantly use her burst, making her an insanely good hydro support unit. Mona's unique sprint also makes her a nice party member for general exploration around Tevat, since she both moves faster and over water more conveniently. While Mona might be a fantastic burst DPS and support unit, she does fall behind a bit by herself. Her own damage output isn't great, and she definitely was made to synergize with other characters for elemental reactions in mind. For this reason, newer Genshin players might have trouble using her, since Mona only becomes a better character once you get better teammates for her. You will need to build a team around Mona to shine, and she isn't the kind of character that you can just slot in for the sake of having a Hydro unit, as other characters like Sing Chu would be better for that. Her normal attacks are also a bit sluggish without some tricky animation cancelling, further reinforcing the idea that she isn't meant to be your main DPS. Mona is an incredibly strong Hydro unit whose main focus is either being a support for her party members or as a burst DPS. Since she's very good at starting and maintaining elemental reactions for her teammates while doing big damage with her burst. Either way, building energy recharge or crit stats on her with artifacts or weapons would be preferable as she will likely be off-field very often. She may be picky, but Mona will be incredibly strong with the right team. If you're looking for a high damage Hydra support or burst DPS, and don't mind building a team around a strong off-field character, then start running on water and count the stars with Mona. See to it that the bards of the world tell the traveler's tales. Secretly, the animal archon who presides over Mondstadt, the god of freedom, roams around his city in a mortal vessel under the disguise of the bard Venti. Being a bow user, Venti's charged shots automatically deal animal damage. His elemental skill is the Skyward Sonnet. This summons a wind domain, launching enemies into the air while dealing animal damage, as well as applying soil if you have already imbued the opponent with another element. Holding this skill creates an even larger wind domain, launching all enemies within its radius as well as Venti himself into the air. The launch enemies will fall slowly back to the ground, allowing you to freely attack them during this period. Venti's elemental burst is the Wind's Grand Ode. Venti will fire an arrow towards the enemies, creating a massive storm eye that sucks opponents into it, dealing both animal damage as well as swirling any other elements that you had previously imbued onto enemies. This damage over time will last for 8 seconds before the storm eye dissipates. Thanks to Venti's skill and burst both being able to nullify enemy movements, this makes him extremely good at crowd control. His elemental burst in particular sucks in and pulls enemies away from you, allowing you to freely shoot at them while the Storm Eye does massive damage over time as well. Venti's passive talent also allows him to immediately regenerate 15 energy after his burst ends, as well as for any other character carrying an element that was swirled in the Storm Eye. The Storm Eye also has a fairly long duration along with a short cooldown, meaning if you can get enough energy back, there can be very little downtime in between your bursts. While Venti's burst is very strong and does massive damage, it does have its limitations. 
It cannot pull in heavy or boss type enemies. And it also cannot swirl Geo, meaning enemies imbued with Geo will not get its damage amplified. Because this burst lifts most enemies into the air, this also can make it difficult for you to land certain attacks from your other party members, which could potentially hinder your DPS. Venti is a simple and basic animal archetype character. He is mainly centered around constantly using his burst for crowd control, as well as amplifying the elemental damage of your other party members, less Geo. Because of how simple he is, he also isn't super reliant on very good artifacts, since he's primarily reliant on his burst as well as the soul effect it provides. Focusing on elemental mastery as well as energy recharge are good stats to look out for in artifacts and weapons. If you are in need of a strong crowd control unit and want huge AoE damage potential when combined with swirling your other party members' elements, then pick up your harp and take to the skies with Venti. Thank you all for watching this video. This was a large collaborative effort between multiple people, so please go follow all of them on their social medias. The links of everyone involved will be in the description below, alongside the previously mentioned written script of this video. Stick around, as next, we're heading to the City of Contracts.